To get a better understanding of the condition of the refrigerant as it moves through various components of the refrigeration system, let us look at a schematic diagram and also a pH diagram side by side. So we will first draw a schematic of the refrigeration system. Uh, as you know, we have four components, uh, compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator. And recall the letters E, A, B, C, D uh, that refer to the conditions of the refrigerant as it moves through this system. So now let's draw a pH diagram. We have the x-axis and the y-axis. Remember that pressure is shown on the y-axis and enthalpy is shown on the x-axis. We draw a bell-shaped curve, again skewed to the right. And now we will draw an ideal refrigeration cycle on this diagram. Uh, we will first draw a horizontal line uh, originating somewhere uh, within this region uh, going all the way to the right hand side until it intersects the saturated vapor curve and then from that point we will draw a uh, constant entropy curve uh, skewed to the right and draw a horizontal line on the top until it meets the saturated liquid curve and then drop a vertical line uh, if it doesn't meet the horizontal line we will just extend the horizontal line to make sure that it meets uh, this vertical line and uh, so we have the uh, ideal refrigeration cycle and we will write down the letters E, A, B, C and D. Note that from E to A we have the evaporator uh, as you know as you can see on the schematic so the same thing in this uh, pressure enthalpy diagram uh, this is for the evaporator section part A to B is for the compressor and the horizontal line on the top from B to D represents the condenser and from D to E we have the expansion valve and you can of course see these different components also shown on the uh, left hand side uh, schematic Note that the refrigerant is moving from E to A, A to B, and B to D, and then D to E. So note that at location E, uh, since it is this point is within this bell-shaped curve, uh, and this region represents a mixture of liquid and vapor, so the state of the refrigerant is uh, uh, a mixture of liquid and vapor, at location E. As the refrigerant moves through the evaporator, it absorbs heat from the surrounding and all the liquid turns into vapor. So by the time the refrigerant exits the evaporator, as shown by point A, the condition of the refrigerant is in saturated vapor state, identified by point A being on the saturated vapor curve. Now in the compressor, the pressure is raised. So you see the increase in pressure going from A to B. And as we note from thermodynamics, that when you take a vapor and you compress it, that process is isentropic. In other words, it's a constant entropy process. That is why we must follow a constant entropy curve in this region. At the exit of the compressor, the vapors are in superheated state. That's why this point B is in the superheated vapor region. Now, from point B to C, as the refrigerant vapors exit the compressor, you first remove the superheat. So, typically, that part of the refrigeration system is called a D superheater, although it is not shown here in the schematic. But most of the heat from the refrigerant is discharged in the condenser as the refrigerant state turns from vapor to liquid. In other words, it condenses, uh, and as the refrigerant vapors condense into liquid state, they discharge heat to the surroundings. So by the time 
the refrigerant exits the condenser, it is in a fully saturated liquid state. There is no vapor in it. It's 100% liquid. That's why this point is on the saturated liquid curve. Now, from point D, which is at high pressure, that high pressure liquid then enters the expansion valve. So, there is a drop in pressure. So, pressure decreases due to the expansion process. And uh, that process, uh, again, according to thermodynamics, is an adiabatic process. Uh, recall that adiabatic means that the enthalpy remains constant. That is why we have a vertical line, uh, D to E, because that represents that the enthalpy, as you know from the x-axis, the enthalpy remains constant in the expansion process. So at point E then, as it leaves the expansion valve, uh, some of the refrigerant is in vapor state, but most of it is in liquid state. So that point E represents a mixture of largely liquid but some vapors in the refrigerant that then enter the evaporator. So this is how the uh, cycle continues. So note that in the evaporator uh, heat is absorbed from the surroundings and in the condenser heat is discharged to the surroundings. So uh, this is how a refrigeration system can extract heat from one location and discharge it in another location. If you look at a refrigerator uh, where the evaporator is located inside the refrigerator, it absorbs heat from the inside of the refrigerator so all your food is uh, cooled and uh, that heat is discharged in the condenser which quite often is located either in the back of the refrigerator or at the bottom of the refrigerator. So sometime if you stand next to a refrigerator, you may feel a, some warm air coming from the bottom of the refrigerator and that is where the heat is being discharged uh, since the condenser is uh, located uh, at the bottom. From this uh, refrigeration cycle, there are three important values that we must obtain so that we can solve problems related to either the design or performance evaluation of a refrigeration system. Those values are for the enthalpy and those are H1 which represent the enthalpy value for either location D or E uh, since both of them are going to be the same that is part of a vertical line and then the enthalpy at lo location A uh, that is enthalpy H2 and then enthalpy at location B, which is enthalpy H3. Uh, those three values, H1, H2, H3, uh, if we can obtain those from a pressure enthalpy diagram, uh, then we'll be able to solve these problems. Uh, we will see in following modules how we can get those numbers that we need for our computations.